everyone, let's get started in chapter three, which is descriptive measures, right? Descriptive is a type of descriptive statistics. It's a way of describing a data set, um, right? Things we can describe um, for populations and samples. So we're kind of assuming we have all the data in this case for populations, which you'll see in a second. We're not, make, we're not starting with a sample and making a conclusion about a population yet. Uh, so we're going to start with measures of center. So this could be the middle of a graph, things like that. So one way to measure center is the average or the mean. And we're going to use slightly different sample uh, symbols if we have a population versus a sample. Um, it just will help us keep track of what we have. And that way, when we are doing inferential statistics later, we can kind of keep track of the difference. So for the population mean, we're going to use this new symbol called mu. That's how I pronounce it. It's a Greek letter. It kind of looks like a U with an extra line or something. And then we have this other symbol called sigma, um, a capital sigma, which is that E thing. Um, we read that as the sum of the x's. This will allow us to have like just shorthand notation for formulas and then divided by n, which is the number of numbers. So sum of the x's means just add up the data. So we've probably all found an average before, just not with this fancy formula, right? We added up the data and divided by the number of numbers. Capital N will represent, represent population size because that'll be the number of numbers. And then for samples, we're going to use x with a bar over it. So I might call that x bar. And again, we're going to find the sum of the x's, right? Because we're going to add up the data. X's are just data values. Add up the data. And then we'll divide by the number of numbers, which we're going to use a little n so we can differentiate the sample versus population. So little n will be sample size. The concept is the same. Um, we're just going to use different symbols, which will be really important later on. And then the rule for rounding is that we always use at least one more decimal place than the original data set. So I'll just show you in the example below. So we have nine friends in our first example. We have nine friends go out to lunch together and they each bring uh, money. So the amount of money in dollars each friend brought is shown below. We want to find the mean and we're going to assume we're only describing the center for these nine people. So that last sentence is telling me that we're only describing these nine people, meaning they represent the whole population. They're not a sample of a bigger group of friends, they are the population. So that just tells us to use the symbol mu rather than x bar. So we We'll use mu is the sum of the x's all over n. And the sum of the x's is just adding them up. 4 plus 12 plus 18 plus 10 plus 13 plus 6 plus 7. And then we have this really stingy friend with only $0. And then a really nice friend with $55. And then since there's 9 friends, my population size is 9. So I'm going to go ahead and add those up. You might hear my calculator clicking. I get 125 and then we'll go hit enter and then divide by nine. And we should get 13.8888888. Right, there's a lot of eights and then a nine at the end. However many eights. So my rounding rule is that we need one more, at least one more. So we could have more. So we need to go at least to the eight because the original data stops at the ones. So we're gonna go one farther. You can always add more, this is a minimum but that's the mi uh, minimum amount of decimal places we should have. So 13.9. You could also say 13.89, right? You can have more, you just can't have less. So that would be my average or my mean. Median might be new. Um, so the rule for median is the data needs to be in order. We'll do that in the example below. 
And then if n is odd, meaning an odd number of numbers, then it's the exact middle value. So it's exactly in the middle, the median. Median essentially means middle. And then if n is even, then it'll be the average of the two middle values. So we'll see how this works as examples come along. So let's find the median of the lunch money. So step one is first we need the data in order. So we can't just find the middle value if it's not in order. So I'm just going to rewrite it. So zero from smallest to largest. Zero, four, six, seven, 10, 12, 13, 18, and 55. And we just kind of find the middle. So maybe you kind of cross off or you can visually see the middle and it looks like 10 is right in the middle. So it's literally the middle value. So the median, we don't have a fancy symbol. We'll just say median equals $10. So basically half the friends brought less and half the friends brought more than $10. So let's go ahead and um, write those numbers out one more time. I'm just gonna write them right here. 0, 4, 6, 7, 10, 12, 13, 18. And then it says that friend with $55 is now like super rich and generous and decides to bring $555. So what happens to the mean and the median? Do they change? So let's do median first, just because it's right here. Is the middle value any different? No, right? The median stays the same. $10 is still in the middle. Right, that friend bringing $550 had no effect on the friend in the middle. And then what happens to the mean? So mu is the sum of the x's over n, right? So now when I add up all the x's, instead of adding 55, right, we're adding 555. So that's going to make a huge difference in the total. So you don't have to write this out every time. You can just do it on your calculator. But if you want to write it out, you can, right? The total amount of money is way larger because one friend brought $555. So I think you get 625 out of nine, over nine, which is now way more. 69.4 dollars is my average. So the mean, oops, sorry about that. The mean increased a lot. And the reason the mean increased is because the total increased. So that's mean and median. Um, I'll jump into mode in the next video.